While baseball might be America's favorite pastime, in Minnesota, it's fishing. And while hundreds of species roam these waters, walleye may reign supreme. But some of those other species can be just as much fun to catch and just as good to eat. Today we're gonna catch, clean, and cook some species of fish that you may have never considered putting on your dinner plate. We'll see how they taste. The Minnesota River near Montevideo is a diverse and often overlooked waterway for anglers. While the lakes within the system like Big Stone and Lac Parle get all the attention, the rest of the river offers plenty of opportunities to catch fish. All right, we're heading out on the river now. We're gonna go out and try to catch some of these fish that we were talking about. We're about to find out what kind of fish we're gonna catch and eat today. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting kinda, of, I'm a little nervous about eating some. There's one of them I haven't eaten before. But, uh, but I'm starving, so I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. We're gonna go buy some brush piles and we'll stop and fish some on the way back. Basically, all the fish relate to a habitat or structure in the water. And it's just like trying to hunt pheasants in a plowed field. If, you, if, if there's no uh, habitat or structure, there isn't any. And the same thing with fish. Del Werspon has been living around the river since the late 60s and is maybe its biggest advocate. And today, he's trying to convince us that the more plentiful fish in this river are just as good as any to eat. This part of the river, you gotta fish what's there. And, and the main fish is the sheepheads and the catfish. And when it comes right down to it, uh, you will have uh, trouble distinguishing a sheephead from a walleye comes eating them, so if they're So you're prepared, telling me, yeah. pulling it out of the frying pan, a walleye and a sheephead. Most people will have trouble di discerning it. Yeah. <laughs> so that was our goal today, catch some sheephead and channel catfish to put in the frying pan. And catching these fish is about as easy as it gets. That's river fishing, he's got two anchors tied up on the front of the pontoons, and then two ropes on each side for tying onto other things like trees. That one right there, good eye. I would probably start out just like this. Sure. And, but you might catch a walleye or anything on it, but when you're fishing the river, fish downstream. What happens when you cast upstream, your bait will go under a snag oh. and you'll be snagged. So cast, cast out, let it sink to the bottom. If you need to let out more line after you cast, you can, but, but at least you'll be pulling the line out from the snag the same way it went in, see? And as far as techniques go for cats or for, for sheephead like this, you just kind of drop that down on the bottom and let it sit. So, yeah. Do you jig it at all or anything? You can. The jigging is primarily to make sure that you're not hooked up on something. Snag. Sure. You're not hooked up on a, behind a rock or on a, a tree branch or something. And occasionally when I do that, I'll get a walleye. So when we fish for walleyes or crappies and we accidentally catch a catfish or particularly sheephead, we're, ah, doggone it, sheephead, you know, we're mad. So when you're fishing catfish and sheephead, do you get mad when you accidentally catch a walleye? No, <laughs> no. Uh, sure, I'd love to catch walleyes. And the more our resource improves, the, the better chance there's gonna be a, a higher balance between the walleyes and the catfish and other fish. During warm water uh, times, you'll catch almost 100% uh, catfish and, and sheepheads. But when the water's cooler in the spring or fall, uh, for every 20 catfish and sheepheads, you might catch a walleye. There was a, a big uh, carp or buffalo. There's one right there. Uh, <laughs> Did not take but, long. But, but it's, it's pretty small. This might be a little sheephead. I is got little, one too. This, this is a little sheephead. This one's a little bit bigger. They are fun to catch. A little bit of fight in them. That might be a good eater, huh? Yeah. Okay, that's about the perfect, perfect eating size right there. Uh, 
And somebody it, may look at that and say, that's a little small, uh, don't you uh, think? Uh, well, I, I'll show you how to clean them more. They're, and it's perfect. We got our catfish. Now it was time for some bigger drum. All right, Dell. all we need is one more sheephead to clean up and put in the frying pan. Pretty sure that's the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> we'll try to catch a, a bigger sheephead. This is right along the edge of the river bank where a wetland comes into the river, and there'll probably be some sheepheads feeding on what comes out of that wetland, the uh, minnows and what have you. This is a sheephead. Uh, in this area. So. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's hey. another perfect size. That's what we're looking for <laughs> right there. <laughs> perfect size. OK. The sheephead, the elusive sheephead of the Minnesota River. Crikey. We're not going to go hungry tonight, fellas. I'm excited to eat one of these Let's now. go. So there we go. Uh, the sheephead or a freshwater drum. These fish have, have been known to get uh, fairly big. They're a lot of fun to catch, actually, and I'm pretty excited to eat one. So we got a couple in the live well. Let's go throw them in some hot oil. Let's try it. After a morning fishing the Minnesota River with Del Wurspon, we're back on shore with a bucket of fish. Del says he'll show me how to clean and fry rough fish to taste as good as walleye. I'm skeptical, but keeping an open mind. All right, so now you got to show me how to clean these fish, Del. We'll give her a shot. All right. If you ice them or run cold water on them, then uh, uh, it'll slow them down. It didn't affect the catfish today, but it put the sheep heads in shock, so they'll be easy to clean. Fish caught when they're active, active in the summer, feeding actively, both sheep heads and catfish, and they're nice and plump, that's when they're the best. That's when they're the best. Uh, in the cold water, a lot of times they're stressed. They're, they're going through their winter hiber hi hibernation or what have you. Uh, you want to eat them when they're in their prime condition. First, Dell shows me how to clean a sheep head, also known as a drum. Essentially, you're cleaning this just like you would a crappie or anything else. Right, it's just like you would a crappie. And I don't go real close uh, to the skin, and I'll tell you why. The, the dark meat that's on the lateral line, if you leave a little bit of that on the skin, then it's not on the fish. They're very easy to clean. That, and, and I've got them in, in uh, cold, running cold water there, and they'll, uh, they'll firm up pretty good, pretty fast. Next, they'll show me two ways to clean a catfish. The first one is skin bone in. These fins right there, right there, right there, them are tough. I mean, you don't want to get stung by them. So I run a finger through the gills just like that. There's uh, these little uh, spinal cords in catfish. If you see them, I usually pull them out, but it's not necessary. One thing people have trouble with on catfish, when you fry them, they say, well, they're mushy or, or rubbery or that type of thing. To avoid that, here's what you do. I score them. Now, when you bread them, your breading will get in between them scores. And uh, it'll fry up good and that'll just flake off of there. With the second catfish, Dell shows me his filleting technique. There's, there's really no meat over these rib bones here. So you put your knife in like right there, back a ways. Just take that fillet off like that. If this was a bigger catfish, I would cut this fillet down the center and make two fillets out of it. It's a small one, but I'll score this just like I did the, the other one 
Only, but don't go all the way through, but just enough where the bre breading gets in between the folds. To cook up catfish and drum fresh from the river, Dellis designed his own little kitchen shack. There was just one thing missing, a bottle opener. This may be the first time I've ever opened a beer on a wood duck box, too. But there we go. Way to go. Del, who's been a fun day fishing. Here to you. It's, you got to have one of these uh, after a good day fishing. Now, I'm getting hungry, though. We're going to have Let's it. Let's eat some of these. First, I'll show you how to bread them, OK? Sounds good. The sheephead and catfish are relatively dry fish, so he just coats them with his favorite cornmeal breading. Next, they go into a deep fryer with canola oil, heated to about 375 degrees. Here it is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fresh. It doesn't get any fresher than this. No. Now, fresh sheephead from the Minnesota River, the taste test. It's going to be kind of hot. Ooh, that is hot. You put walleye in there. You swapped this out, right? This isn't the fish we just caught. Well, yeah. This is walleye from your You freezer. dipped it in that hot sauce, though, didn't you? Well, this is good. Just kidding. This is very good, actually. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are going to eat. <laughs> the sheep had firm and flaky white meat did remind me of walleye, and the catfish was also delicious. Del was right. Scoring the fish down to the backbone so there's more crispy breading really made a difference. Now, don't get me wrong. I still prefer walleye fishing, but hey, if I can catch a little sheephead, I might not throw it back next time. Oh, this is this is made for TV. This spot. 